السلام عليكم أمال السلامي نخدم اي اي انجينير ريسيرش انسبي يمكن تلقاو على تويتر نتاعي وعلى لينكدي تلقاوني واليوم باش نقرا باش نتعلموا ماشين ماشين ليرنينغ ات جوجل ويز جوجل كلاود ستدي جا دونك اول حاجه باش نعملوها هي الانتروداكسيون للانتليجنس ارتيفيسيال Uh, introduction to artificial intelligence. Uh, what is artificial intelligence? Umbad, uh, how are we going to use uh, Google Cloud platforms? Uh, what's artificial intelligence? Uh, machines that mimic human intelligence. We yeah, artificial intelligence. The theory and development of computer systems able to perform tasks normally requiring human intelligence, such as visual, visual per perception, speech recognition, decision making, and translation between languages. Uh, demystifying AI. Uh, AI here has two things. It has AI neural intelligence or AI general intelligence. The AI neural intelligence here is the same as Uh, smart speakers, self-driving cars, uh, it's towards a task, a specific task. It's not general. Uh, general artificial intelligence is more like um, uh, how to use the AI, general, how to use it. The history of artificial intelligence is Artificial intelligence is not new, it's not new. It's from 1956, and it's still there. In 1956, the world's artificial intelligence coined by Johnny McCarthy, but the invention of robots, uh, supercomputers, Deep Blue was designed, which detected the world chess champion in the game in 1997. In 2002, first commercially successful robotic vacuum cleaner. In 2005, uh, hatta 2018, speech recognition, dancing robots, smart homes, like uh, and many more to come from AI. Uh, artificial intelligence. Uh, thama, uh, there is like three different parts. Uh, artificial intelligence, or we call it machine learning, or it is deep learning. Uh, artificial intelligence. هي اللي مو جلوبال الكلمة الكبيرة معناها والماشين ليرنينج هي سب فيلد من artificial intelligence uh, of AI giving machine the skills to learn from examples without being explicitly programmed and deep learning which is also uh, sub field حتى هو من من machine learning specialized machine learning techniques enabling machines to train themselves to perform tasks uh, المشين ليرنينغ بعد التسلسل هذا نجم نشوفوا شنو الفرق ما بين المشين ليرنينغ والديب ليرنينغ خاطر العباد يقولوا شنو معناها ما هو الفرق ما بين المشين ليرنينغ والديب ليرنينغ الفرق الوحيد اللي زوز نجم نشوفوا اللي زوز فيهم انبوت وزوز وزوز فيهم اوتبوت اما الفرق الوحيد هو في فيتشر اكستراكشن والكلاسيفيكيشن في المشين ليرنينغ يكونوا تو ديفرنت معناها ان تو ديفرنت ستيبس The deep learning it's in the same step. Man, the model, the deep learning is to make feature, to make feature, to make feature extraction and the classification. Uh, why deep learning is successful now? Man, how many of the things that made that deep learning become successful? There are actually three reasons. The reason one is the large data. Man, the data structure. The data we can find in. في plusieurs في في برشا حاجات كيف ما في حاجات كثيرة معناها كيف ما كيف ما نشوفوا لي جيميل كيف ما نشوفوا في في الفيسبوك كيف ما نشوفوا في برشا في برشا ابليكيشن دي ابليكيشن فما الجي بي يو والسي بي يو والهاردوير اللي هو تحسن وتطور معناها مقابل لي زوتر 
عنها القبل وفما للنسونس للتواصل تاع ديب معناها الوجود ديب ليرنينغ ديب ليرنينغ اللي تخلق اللي ما صارلوش برشا ملي اللي بدا نستعملوها في الليتيراتور types of machine learning اللي هما supervised learning unsupervised learning or reinforcement learning uh, supervised learning is like uh, you have like a labeled data unsupervised learning you have no labeled data and reinforcement learning is like learning from an environment الفرق ما بينتهم انه supervised learning هو learning الانبوت والاوتبوت الاوتبوت نتاعك تعرفه معناها عندك فكرة على الأوتبوت نتاعك، الـ unsupervised learning هو يحاول كيفاش يقسم إلى مجموعات مش نقولو الـ data نتاعها، في الـ reinforcement learning يحاول يتعلم في أنا في في مكان مخصص كيف ما في الـ المكان يجم يكون chess board ولا يجم يكون game ولا يجم يكون برشا حاجات، مستعمل أكثر في توسكي gaming. وكتوسكي معناها في 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 ما هو معناها جيمنج وفي ما هو <hesitation> نجم يوصل حتى معناها في الهيلث كير دونك شين <hesitation> هذي في فيما يخص السوبرفايز ليرنينج كيف ما نشوفو الانبوت والاوتبوت ليبل ديتا كيف ما قلنا ريبليكي ذا رايت انسر كلاسيفيكيشن بريدكشن image recognition, email, spam, filtering, forecasting هذا هما ديز ابليكاسيون في الـ في الـ في الـ unsupervised learning نلقى الـ input نلقى الـ input ما نعرفوش شنو هو الـ output نتاعنا الـ 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 data is unlabeled و find me and the the data the, the, the learning the model is trying to learn or to find patterns in the data some of the most famous Uh, algorithms, like clustering, association, anomaly detection, from the anomaly detection and clusters. Reinforcement learning from states and actions, and the states and the robot and the actions and the no data set. We have no data set. We just have like a chessboard or a gameplay. Find actions that minimize reward. But the goal is to find actions and. It's like decision making, learning to play the game, movie recommendation system, and whatsoever. Uh, this is a dancer flow playground, so we can we can perhaps see it after. So uh, just to show you the difference between the CPU and the GPU and the dancer. The CPU is like we're having the, dim the dimension of the data. But CPU is like uh, everyone have it. The GPU is like the graphic design, and the TPU is like sensors rendered by Google uh, for, uh, for for machine learning purposes. And all of all of that is all of these are like basically uh, machine learning. Uh, not machine learning. Sorry. All of these are basically hardware that exists in every computer. Now, if we show here, from a CPU. فما جي بيو هذي جي بيو اللي نلقاو في الجوجل درايف This is a, a small example of how to do جي بيو versus سي بيو to see the difference between between the two
The difference in the, uh, in the in the application in in real life the speed and the the speed of GPU compared to the CPU. Now we're just going to see AI some AI applications, which is basically like we have for example here self-driving cars, like for example. Uh, object detection segmentation how how the um, the, the neural network is able to, to to detect the object and segment it like exactly segment pixel by pixel uh, the uh, the object uh, in security we can detect like basically uh, lots of like thieves or something like that retail thief فما كيفاش لهنا نشوفوا كيفاش باغ اكزومبل سينجل لهنا which what he is grabbing what he is grabbing لهنا نشوفوا لو نومبر اسكي دي نقص ولا زيد باغ بوغ البرودكت ذات وي هاف ان هيلث كير اولسو كيف ما لهنا في البريدكشن ثينجز ذات دوكتورز كان ايفن بريدكت Like here, for example, this with this technology, we can say, for example, in five years, the cardiovascular risk is like AOC 70%. From the retina, we can say we, we can see the age, uh, the gender, whether he's a male or female, the systolic, the diastolic, uh, the HP1C, etc. There is also generative adversarial networks. These networks are basically like Uh, that can generate things that don't even exist. العباد هذوما ماهومش موجودين في الدنيا معناها. That's the machine that they, they that invented that, that created them somehow with generative adversarial networks. Uh, we cannot, معناها مش نجمو نشوفوهم مش كاين شي في sur des images pour des humains, mais plutôt aussi pour les paintings. which can create new arts, like uh, styles like Van Gogh or Picasso or something. There is also reinforcement learning. Reinforcement learning, كيف ما شوف نساعة هو سنين هنا في كيشن. كيف ما نشوفه لهنا الموديل قاعد تتعلم واحد وقاعد يلعب واحد. لهنا the human, the human eye is trying to escape the, uh, the parts that he shouldn't be get stuck to into it. This is here also there is a chessboard that he can play. And now uh, today we're going to, to do natural language processing for with Google Cloud. So basically uh, we're trying like uh, how natural language processing with Google Cloud. Uh, so what is NLP? Natural language processing. Natural language processing is a branch of artificial intelligence that deals with the interaction between computers and humans using the natural language. The ultimate objective of NLP is to read, decipher, understand, and make sense of the human languages in a manner that is valuable. Most NLP techniques rely on machine learning to, der to derive meaning from human languages. So this is what is artificial intelligence. Well, NLP applications from uh, ما شوفوا لهنا human talking to machine audio to text conversion in mobile phones basically word processor for human writing analysis لهنا كيف ما الميكروسوفت وورد وقت اللي يصلح لك ولا الجوجل جيميل ولا التليفون معناها the phone اللي يصلح لك personal assistant applications such as okay google google assistant google search engine is also like We're trying to, to take the information, to retrieve the information from it using the Google search engine. All of this is using natural language processing techniques. Like there is translation, there is like we, we can see here the, the Google Assistant, the mobile phones when you talk to your mobile, uh, the Chromecast, and whatsoever. Uh, 
uh, why NLP is difficult? NLP is difficult is the nature because of the nature of human languages that makes NLP difficult. The rules that dictate the passing of information using natural languages are not easy for computers to understand. Some of these rules can be high level and abstract. For example, when someone uses a sarcastic remark to pass information. On the other hand, some of these rules can be low level. For example, using the character S to signify, for example, plurality of items. Like here, we're saying basically that NLP is hard because it's not easy to detect synthetism, but it's easy like to detect the plural or the singular, but it's somehow we need to understand the sarcasm of talking of someone who's talking to be able to help the machine understand. So there are lots of NLP techniques, but uh, the most important ones are like synthetic analysis and semantic analysis. Like synthetic analysis, well, arrangement of words. Don't, how, how can we arrange words, meaning like for example, limitization, limitization. It entails reducing the various inflex forms of a word into a single form for easy analysis. Part of speech tagging, it involves identifying the part of speech for every word. With semantic analysis, the meaning that is conveyed by text, like for example, the near, which is the most famous one, named entity recognition. It involves determining the parts of a text that can be identified and categorized into present groups. Examples of such groups include names of people and names of places. NLP methods. Uh, NLP methods, like basically, uh, we can see like CNN, like deep neural networks, like CNN, RNN, LSTM, attention mechanism, can even see reinforcement learning and supervised learning GANs models, deep generative models, or even memory augmented networks. Uh, we're not going into details on, on in all these techniques because like we, we need a lo lot of more, but we can you can like uh, serve them on to phone but you can serve them in the net after. And uh, the tools uh, for machine learning using Google Cloud is like, uh, so basically for machine learning, we can use like uh, three different techniques. Uh, is cloud-based or mobile API, like vision, natural language processing APIs. Uh, the more flexible and, uh, and that this one requires like uh, less effort or we can, uh, an existing model architecture, retrain it or fine tune it on your data set. Like you have your own data set, you can use an existing model architecture for that. Or develop your own machine learning models for new problems. Donc, uh, cloud machine learning APIs. See here and understand the word. So basically, uh, what we're going to do today is that we're going to, to use cloud machine learning APIs. Uh, for cloud-based solution, there is different machine learning APIs. And you have pre-trained models, ML models, from a natural language API, the more standard. There is also vision API, speech API, translation API, jobs API, or video intelligence API. Uh, here, for example, for Google Cloud, Cloud Visions uses, for example, for faces, we can detect face, facial landmarks, emotions, label, detect entities for furniture, OCR, lo logos, safe search, landmark, images, and properties. We have like uh, the process, you have an image, you create a JSON request with an image or a pointer to an image. You call the REST API and then process the JSON response. There is also Cloud Natural Language API, which is syntax, like, for example, syntax analysis, entity recognition, sentiment analysis, extract sentences, like for example, in sentence analysis, extract sentences, identify parts of speech and create dependencies, parts, trees for each sentence. Um, 
And there is also Cloud Speech API, which is like automatic speech recognition, inappropriate content filtering, noisy audio handling, and global vocabulary, for example. Uh, for cloud-based solution, we have like Cloud AutoML, which is like basically uh, tab uh, uh, generation like of machine learning automatically, like trained custom machine learning models. AutoML like basically was nominated in the MIT TR10 Big Breakthrough Technologies in 2018 such as an AI for everybody tech. Uh, custom machine learning we can use for custom machine learning this one style of TensorFlow. TensorFlow, which is a, a library developed by Google, which help, which is open source and helps create great AI deep learning in particular. And it was first released in November 2015. Uh, learning resources we have like here like Deep Learning for Coders, Deep Learning Without a PhD by Martin Gorner. Uh, trending AI in NLP articles, like these are like the trending AI article, cheat sheets for AI, data science simplified, getting started with building real time AI infrastructure. There is also the books of uh, Gutfellow, RL, and, and uh, Deep Learning Boot book by uh, Ian Gutfellow and uh, uh, Joshua Benju, and there is also reinforcement learning, an introduction to reinforcement learning. There is also like different like multitude of courses like Udacity, Coursera, uh, and the one who likes to do some challenges, like you can go to Gaggle or Zindi for African. Uh, so now I think we're going to for the practice, which is basically not sure if everyone, if someone has a question or not, or should we just go? Let me show to the uh, practice with uh, Google Cloud.
أول حاجة بنعملها هي an introduction to ML language processing في quick lab بيانا. donc there are different quests in this in this quick lab but the one that we are going to use we're going to 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 use them one by one. so the first one is cloud ML engine quick start. let's go there. أول حاجة بنعملها we we are going to see the first quick lab so it's your first quick lab On va juste, we're going to skip uh, Cloud ML Engine. So we're going to use the Cloud ML Engine with the quick start. First, we're going to join. So basically, here, Shnoman would like to join. We're going to join with Google. Up here, your OK, 
credentials. أول حاجة نجم نشوفوها في الكويك لاب اللي هو يعطيك overview على الكويك لاب من بعد set up and requirements and then the instructions in the whole كويك لاب أول حاجة باش نعملوها هي باش نقراو ال overview على الكويك لاب هذايا this lab will give you hands on practice with TensorFlow model training both locally and on Google Cloud ML Engine After training, you will learn how to develop your model to Cloud ML Engine for serving prediction. You will train your model to predict income category of person using the United States Census Income data. This lab gives you inter an introductory end-to-end -end experience of training and prediction on Cloud Machine Learning Engine. This lab will use a census data set to create a TensorFlow training application, run your training job on a single instance worker instance, Run your training job on distributed training jobs. Optimize your hyperparameters using hyperparameter tuning and deploy the model to support prediction. Request an online prediction and see the response. Request a batch prediction. Before we start the lab, these are like the instructions. We're going to read them. So, our Haja. Before we start, we click the start and then we open the Google console uh, and then use another account. We're going to use another account and then we're going to try to, to have like here the Google Cloud platform. I think the uh, start the lab. Uh, I think I need to enter with my other. Okay. We're going to join. Just uh, um, we have like a technical issue just for two seconds, please.
Bon. We launch with one credit. Then I just we open the Google console. We have the Google console. We copy the username. We copy the password. And then we accept. Done. نحن نشوفوا عنا الكونسول تاع جوجل كلاب قديمنا يجري لكن هنا كيف ما نشوفوا لهنا كما الجوجل كلاب بلاتفورم there is like different range of things like app engine, API services Networking services, monitoring services, but there is lots and lots of services in Google Cloud. This is a Google Cloud platform for learning. We're going to enable the Cloud Shell here. Then. see here like for example Google Cloud like there is different commands like from a different command the huma ikhawlu lak bishtuf authentication list of that can amlu lahna copy and then paste here we can see the account the credential accounts like Active account interna. This is the email address. There. And then, all the things we have in the cloud, in the free cloud interna, is the TensorFlow. We have installed the TensorFlow, which is like what we said earlier, library for uh, developing uh, machine learning models. Donc, on va, on va vérifier l'installation. Here. TensorFlow version 1.14. Il est installé sur le, sur le cloud interne. We have like a cloud chain run the following command clone. Uh, we have clan, cloud ML simple repo. If you go here, we have this repo, which has like the cloud ML samples, like different samples. So we're going to clone it. In the cloud ML simple. Number CD. No call. So it is called cloud ML simple. Mojud wala ana fil fil repo piana. Fil repo piana. So, your current directory should be now this one. We're going to go to navigate, actually, to the Cloud ML Simple yeah, Census Estimator. But just a little instruction if we go, for example, to the Cloud and we see LS, we have like different different categories. We have Census, Chainer, Cloud ML Simple, etc. And estimator. We 
here we have constants, data flow set up that by Então, بعد نشوف شنو ما هي دوما اللي باش نستعملهم. دونك هنا باش اون فا ديفلوبي ان فاليدي يور تريننج ابليكيشن. اون فا لو فير لوكالي معناها في الكلاود نتاعنا. Before you run your training application in the cloud, get it running locally. Local environments provide an effective and efficient development and validation workflow so that you can iterate quickly. You also want to secure charges for cloud resources when debugging your application locally. So first, we're going to have like get your training data. The A machine learning model, we have like the data, the model, and then the prediction. The result, and then we're going to evaluate the model. On the evaluate model, evaluate the model using testing methods like testing testing technology, test test testing methods, so that we can say, for example, the model in the model in the uh, we need like for example more data or more training or anything else. The relevant, so we, we're going to get your tra the training data, the relevant data files like adult, adult data and adult tests are hosted in a public Google Cloud storage packet. The Google Cloud from a storage packet, like packets, watch like, it's, it's like storage, like uh, it's a storage. We need a new data pen. You can read the files directly from Google Cloud Storage or copy them to your local environment. For this lab, you'll download the sample for locally, local training and later upload them to your own cloud storage bucket for cloud training. Run the following command to download the data to local files directory and set variables that point to the downloaded files. With these instructions, we have like here, we're going to create the data file and you are with the instruction mkdir data and then we're going to copy the data into using the juice type in our data directory from the internet. Here it's getting the data to the directory and it's completing. It's completing. So if you see, we have like here, we have here now data. If we go to data. Okay. Now set the train and evaluation data, the train data and the evaluation data variable to your local file paths path by running the following commands. We're going to expect, export the train data and the evaluation data in our paths here. We see, for example, city data. Like here, we have like the training CSV file, like CSV file. If we, for example, see the head of the data, adult, for example, uh, adult data.csv, we're going to see that we have like different people, like we have different categories things different like for example number 39 state government uh bachelor never married or not married not in family what his race for example white what his gender male uh what is his income like we have uh, what he's the place he's living in etc now we're going to install the dependencies Although TensorFlow is installed on Cloud Shell, you must run the symbols requirements.txt file to ensure you are using the same version of TensorFlow. So we're going to install the requirements, but before that, we need to get out here and then we install the requirements. The requirements here are like, OK, 
KRS or things like that. Okay, so now everything is installed. Here, successfully installed. Like for example, here we have like the salt packages. Future, New Mix, Bed, Pandas, Python Detail, PyCragma, Psyche, Setup Tools, TensorBoard, TensorFlow. Uh, all of these are used by TensorFlow to help like in machine learning models. And this is actually used like for like uh, data visualization. Also, TensorFlow is for data visualization. Keras is like used for TensorFlow 1.1. Uh, uh, it's like it's on top, but now in TensorFlow 2.0, it's like uh, Keras is implemented within it within TensorFlow. All has a how to run a local training job. A training job is local when it's in your device. It means in, in your cloud shell, in your cloud, not uses any other machine instances, any other instance or any other resources apart from the resources that you have in your machine, in your uh, in, in your virtual machine actually. First, we export the model. And then we train, we run this training job, like we see here, like Google Cloud Air platform is like a platform for Google Cloud to run it locally on your machine. Like we have like the model name, the trainer task, the package path, the job directory, where my, we actually output the model directory. We have a model directory output, train files, uh, train evaluation. The evaluation files are the evaluation data. The number of steps is 100 here, and the evaluation steps is 100. Uh, sorry, the training step is 1000, and the evaluation step, evaluation step is 100. The uh, parameters we we can change them. Now, the cloud is training our mother, sorry. It may take a while. And the jobs are being executed, like uh, every every part of the uh, of the instruction are being executed one by one. Like here we have like save model written to the output export census. This is the save model, which is a .pb file. Modulum uh, is saved. 
we have the estimation of the loss final for, for, the, for the final step is 30.46, which is a good one, in for job and the data, which are like basically uh, normal. When you're running, so basically, so basically here, when you're running the simple training job on cloud, uh, later in the lab, like basically, you will see that the command is not much different from the above. This is in the CMLE. We're going to see how we're going, what are we going to use after. By default, verbose plugin is turned off. You can enable it by setting the verbosity tag to debug. A later example will show you how to enable it. We'll see it after that. Inspect the summary log using TensorBot. To see the evaluation results, uh, we're going to try to see the, the evaluation results. You can use the visualization tool called TensorBot. TensorBot is uh, it's a, it's a visualization tool. This is TensorBot, basically. With TensorBolt, you can visualize your TensorFlow graph, plot quantitative metrics about the execution of your graph, and show additional data like images that pass through the graph. TensorBolt is available as part of the TensorFlow installation. The Sabian Avec TensorBolt is a TensorFlow. On va exécuter TensorFlow, and here we We're going to launch it using this command line. And then Now tensor board can use it. But just to bat for the now. Click on the web preview icon. And preview on for ATP. Click on it. And we can see that open tensor board hand. This is the accuracy of our model, which is basically here. The evaluation census is like 0 0.81, and the value is like 0 0.81. The step is one case, like 1,000. The time is like today, Monday, August 6, 5. You can see part, this is the accuracy, the precision and the recall, uh, the global, the average box, how the loss is dropping somehow after then is like getting up the label the mean the loss the actual loss not the upper one how is like here is also dropping Uh, we can see here that we're using the tensor board here. Shut down the tensor board, we just need to click and then control C, control C, and then they are out. We get out of it. Running model prediction locally. Now we're going to use the cloud chat. So the first thing is that. We go to the census again, our census data. You should receive a similar output. The output export census directory holds the model exported as a result of the local training locally. 
list that directory to see the generated this is the time spectrum of the subdirectory that we are going to use after we are going to copy this with your timestamp our timestamp each one so we're going to change here the timestamp with this one generated uh, I think I might need to write one five six five zero two seven seven four six and then we execute this is the result that we get all classes IDs classes logistics logis and probabilities how is the probability so basically what we're going to have here is that this is the result for this uh, for this command which is basically the result the class IDs the logistics and all uh, like the class zero means like the income is under 50k and class one means income is beyond 50k so basically like this is giving us the results the predictions for an example like we're going to, to use the trained model for predictions now the process that we have used is that we have the data we have the trained model and from that training model, we're going to use we're going to use the training model the prediction for predictions. Once you train your TensorFlow model, you can use it for predictions on your new new data set, on your new data. In this case, you've trained the census model to predict income category given some information about a person. For this section, you will predefine prediction request file test.json included in the GitHub repository we put Z3 in the census directory. You can expect the JSON file in the Cloud Shell editor if you're interested in learning more. So, what happened? Run your training job in the cloud. Now that you have validated your model by running it locally, you will now get predictions. Using OVA SE, which is a, we're going to use Cloud ML Engine. You remember, you will remain in the Cloud Shell for this section. Cloud ML engine needs to access. Need to access. We need to access it to read and write data during model training and batch this prediction. First, set the following variables. These are the variables. This is the cloud storage. You can see it. Then we're going to create a new bucket. The bucket is like the storage where you have all your data, all your stuff there. And then we're going to test if it's complete or not. Everything is fine. Upload the data files to your cloud storage bucket. We're going to use the true style, which is we have the bucket, and we're going to import the data to it. So, we're going to the bucket, bucket container, which is in the cloud and the engine. And then, we're going to, to set the variables again of the train and the evaluation. And then we're going to copy the JSON to our cloud chain, in the, our bucket cloud chain.
this. And now we're going to run the Insta Streaming in the cloud. This is not locally. It means it's not in your virtual environment, but it's in the cloud. In it, it's like in the cloud of the cloud. With a validated training job that runs in both single instance and distributed mode, you're now ready to run a training job in the cloud. Start by requesting a single instance training job. Use the default basic scale tier tire to run a single instance training job. The initial job request can take a few minutes to start, but subsequent jobs run more frequently. This enables quick iteration as you develop and validate your training job. Select a name for the initial training grant, the training grant that distinguishes it from any subsequent training grants. For example, you can append a number one to represent the iteration. Name, it's not one. Specify a directory, directory for output generated by Cloud ML Engine by setting an output path variable to include when requesting training and prediction jobs. The output path represents the fully qualified cloud storage location for model checkpoints, summaries, and exports. You can use the bucket name variable. You defined in a, pre in a previous step, it's good practice to use the job name as the output directory. And now we're going to run the following command to submit the training job in the cloud that uses a single process. This time, set the verbosity, which is what we have talked about. We set the self connection stamp we here. Verbosity can in default no, but now we're going to, to make it to debug so that you can expect the full logging, inspect the full logging output and try accuracy, loss, metrics, etc. The output also contains a number of other warning messages that you can ignore. You can ignore it. So for example, we're going to try and run, you see here, AI platform, this job, that we are going to, to, to see all of this queue. Well, this is queue. Perhaps it will give us the result later. You can now monitor the progress here. Because it's a big one. Yet. This may, may take a while. This is it. As we can see, validating job requirements here. These are the services, the job creation, the, the job census is good, the waiting for the job to be provisioned, and for the training to start, we're waiting it.
Check how much done we have left. We need to make sure to finish all the quick lab before before the time ends, or else we'll have to we'll have to repeat everything from the start. So here the task is completed successfully, just needing for, for it to give us a hand. Also, this still. And it's finished. The test completed successfully. Now we can see that the task is completed. We can inspect the output. If you have been monitoring the job, you will know you're done when your output is on to this one. Just like the cloud training outputs are produced in the cloud storage. Outputs are saved in the path, so we're going to save the output here. Okay.
Now, we can see the output in TensorFlow. Again. Now we're going to see like on the board. This is the small thing like the result. This is zero point zero eight the result is different from the one that you have used before. Because it's in the cloud and it's different. They use different methods, different methodologies. So basically, uh, methodology that the methods used, but the methods We're going to see support prediction, deploy your model to support prediction. By deploying your trained model to Cloud ML Engine to serve online prediction requests, you get to benefit of scalable serving. Scalable maneha, you can augment, if you have more data, you can uh, augment your model or let's say, uh, uh, جانب التطويري للبنية تحتية متاع Google Cloud الموضوع ده معني. This is useful if you expect your chain model to be hit with many prediction requests in a short period of time. Wait until your cloud ML and then training job is done. If it's finished, when you see a green check marked by the job name in the cloud console or when you see the job, the, the message job completed successfully. So, I'll name those senses. We need to have, and then we create a cloud ML engine model. This is model is in cloud again. And like we see, results created ML engine model in this model. Check our progress and it's done. So here select the exported model to use by looking up the full path of your exported training model binaries. We are going to see exported model. Okay, this is the saved model. We have the saved of PB, the variables, the variable index, what's etc. Scroll through the output variable. We using the timestamp and add it to the following commands. So here. We need to copy the, the timestamp to set the environment variable to its values. We need to go 
And this is the best. The timestamp for this training run will not be the same at the time done. It's not the same one as generated before. Now we're going to deploy the model.
perhaps. Mm. Not sure. Which should have worked. Let's say for example. Mm -hmm. I think perhaps the problem is to this one. I guess perhaps because okay. I have put the wrong Uh, this is the timestamp, not the one that we have used before. Uh, I guess I was wrong about the timestamp. The timestamp, sorry. This might take a few minutes.
Okay, cool. And it's done. So the train B. The model deployment has been done. Let's check the progress. This now it may take several minutes to deploy your train model. When you're done, you can see a list of your models using the models, the models list command. So here are the models list. This is the name, the version one. This is our model. Now send an online prediction request to your deploy model. You can now send prediction requests to your deploy model test. The following command sends a prediction request using test.json file included in the GitHub repository. It may take a while. This is the result here, as we can see. And now we're going to see, like here, this is the, the outcome, like classes zero means income under 50k, and class one means income beyond 50k. So below multiple choice question to reinforce your understanding of this lab, Answer them to the best of your abilities. The model version is an instance of machine learning solutions stored in the Cloud ML Engine servers. And Cloud ML Engine offers training jobs and batch prediction jobs. And uh, you can think about it and just try to find the, the result. Say true or false, and here true or false. True, and say true. And now we have finished the quick lab. See, here we have like two minutes left, which is a good thing. We've learned how to train a dancer flow model in this quick lab. Cloud ML, finish your quest. To finish up other quests here in machine learning APIs, baseline data ML, introduction to machine learning. This is the one. Introduction to image processing whatsoever. And there is also training and certificates in the Google Cloud. So you can take classes, you can take certificates. It's very, very interesting.
Okay, perhaps I'm not sure, but I think let's stop it. Okay. So we'll raise it and then we submit. So this is the first lab that we have used. We have learned a lot about training models in Google Cloud platforms. The second one is The link. So basically, perhaps we should have uh, read this before. It's no secret that machine learning is one of the fastest growing fields in tech. And love. Google Cloud Platform has been instrumental in furthering it, its development with a host of APIs. Google Cloud Platform has a tool for just about any machine learning job in this introductory request. You will get hands-on practice with machine learning as it applies to language processing by taking clouds that will enable you to extract entities from text and perform sentiment analysis and syntax analysis and syntax analysis as well as the use to speech the you the speech to text APL from transaction. So what we have done is the Cloud ML engine. Now we're going to do this one, Google Cloud Speech API quick quick start. So we can get out of these ones. Okay. It's just a 30 minute one. It's not very very hard. It's the same concept as the previous one. So we're not going into these details for these ones. So let's first start the lab. <coughs> Here we're getting the lab resources. Okay, let's open the Google Cloud console.
remove everything is ready except now first of all we're going to using curl which is we're going to use to request a speech api speech api needs an api key that's why we're going to use curl so first thing is that we go api services credentials and then we're going to create credentials create an api key we're gonna copy it that you have your API key, you will save it as an environment variable to avoid having to insert the value of your API key in each request. In order to perform next step, please connect to the compute engine provision, provision for you. This via SSH, SSH opens the navigation menu and select the compute engine. You should see the following provision when it's أول حاجة رح نعملها هي إنه نحلو our compute engine These are the virtual machine instances. We're going to open the console. Not sure if it's shared with you or not. Now, what we're going to do is that we're going to export the API.
API field. You will see a pre-recorded file that's available on Google Plus. You can listen to this file. Listen to it. Oh. You can open it here. So you can just listen to it. It's just like saying like uh, an English straight sentence. Now we're going to create a request to JSON. In SSHT command line, here, and then we're going to copy this. Well, actually, for me, I prefer Nano. Then I save it. The request body has a config and an audio object. In the config, you tell the speech API how to present the request. The encoding parameters tell the API which type of audio encoding you're using with the file while the file is being sent to the API. Flag is the encoding type for a raw file. Like, there is a bunch of documentation if you want to know more. And there are other parameters you can add to your config object. But encoding is the only required one. In the audio object, you pass the API the URL on, of the audio file in the cache storage. Now, let's check our progress. And now we're ready to call the speech API. First, pass your request body along with the API key environment variable to the speech API with the following Perl command. All in one single command line. Okay, so probably I have permission issues. Not sure why. But the result should be something like this. The transpick is saying how old is the Brooklyn Bridge, basically. The transcript will return the speech API six transaction of your audio file and the confidence value indicates how sure the API is that it has accurately transcribed your audio. I have I'd like the statue is tonight because I, there is a problem with like sharing two different screens. That's why I copy pasted 
That's why perhaps it didn't accept it. You'll notice that we call the synchronized method in the request above. The speech API supports both synchronous and asynchronous speech to text transcription. In this example, you can a complete audio file, but you can also use the synchronized method to perform streaming speech to a text trans transaction. You create the speech API request, then call the speech API. The result, as you can see, it is in the result of JSON. We're going to check. Okay, so let's see. Why the permission is the night. And we have finished the quick lab. So I'm not sure if so basically that. We have created a speech API, we have this speech API. We have basically seen that we can see the confidence and the result here of the transcript. It's like we're having a dot rate file, we have a machine that is able to upload to diagnose it and say say the transcript 
in the transcript is saying, how old are you? Is How old is the Brooklyn Bridge? With a confidence of 0 0.98, like 0 0.98, which is a great, uh, great result. Because if you if you have if you have actually uh, heard the transcript, we would have seen that it's what the man saying, "How old is the Brooklyn Bridge?" So basically, we can give Google Cloud uh, like bunch of, bunch of wave files. Not you have a wave file. Millie wave files, they become dot wave files, they become. He tries to learn from them and give you the results. Snoam or root wave file, or basically what is has been used. We can turn the lab. We submit. So this is our second lab. It's not very hard. That's my age. That you do. Next, we're going to this one, which is Cloud Natural Natural Language API. Now for the Cloud Natural Language API, again, we'll start the lab. Okay, again, we open the Google Cloud Console. We copy.
this. Okay, now let's get to the basics. So, now again, first you will set an environment variable with your project ID, which we will use throughout this code. So, perhaps we should might want to have an overview of the picture. Google Cloud Natural Language API lets you extract information about people, places, events, and more. Mentioned in text documents, news articles, or blog posts. You can use it to understand sentiments about your product on social media, or bars intended from customer conversations happening in a call center or a messaging app. You can even upload text documents for analysis. Cloud Natural Language API features are like sentence, context analysis, extract tokens and sentences, identity parts of speech, POS, and create dependencies for trees for each sentence. It must also become a sentence analysis, entity recognition, the identity, entity, and table by type, by type, such as person, organization, location, events, products, and media, sentiments, Sentiment analysis understand the overall sentiments expressed in, in a block of text. Content classification classify documents in predefined like seven more than seven hundred categories. Multi languages enables you to easily analyze text in multiple languages, including English, Spanish, Japanese, Chinese, French, German, Italian, Korean, and Portuguese. Integrated REST APIs and REST API, and in this lab, you will use the analyze entities method to ask the cloud natural language API to extract entities. Les entités in are like people, places, events. So, je n'ai pas de la vie, mais je n'ai pas de la vie, je n'ai pas de la vie, je n'ai pas de la the phrase Erika Meda Termos. It now follows people, places, and events. Now, first, we create an API key. Then, we create a new service to access. API and then create credentials to log in as your new service account. Create these credentials as saved in a JSON file. Nice. Now we set the Google application credentials environment variable. The environment variable should be set to the full path of the credential. JSON file we created, which you can see in the output from the previous command. This is the JSON file that we have done. And now let's check if we have created an API key. And now let's make an entity analysis request. In order to perform next step, please connect to the instance for vision and preview via SSH. Open the navigation menu and select view engine, as usual. You should see the following provision at Linux, Linux and so. 
compute engine and then we'll try out the natural language API entity analysis with the following samples. We copy paste it in our SSH. basically like having a Google account we're having like a Google cloud but for an environment a copy paste the results and make the entity regress let's say run the below command and then I'll try to share the results with you okay I'll share my other my other um, screen with you. This one. Like we can see here, the result. Like we have like. The name Michelangelo, the salience is like 0 0.82 and with the type person. Dimensions, the text, like for, for example, the content Italian and the type is proper. Uh, we have like the calling of San Matthew, like we have the type proper here. And we, the calling of San Matthew is like the salience is 0 0.031. And it's type of an event. It could be an event, it could be a proper, or it could be here the Italian could be education. It could be both. So basically, we can see these results. Let's get back to our screen. Okay. This is like this is like the same result that this the one here, like here, Michelangelo and all. Now as you can see like read through your results for each entity in the response you will see entity, name and type, a person, location, event, etc. The metadata and associated Wikipedia URL in these. There is a one talent and the analysis of whether where this entity appeared in the text. Talent is a number between zero and one, range with the reference that refers to the centrality of the entity to the text as a whole. Mentions which is the same entity mentioned in a different way. And now you've seen sent your first request to the Cloud Natural Language API. Congratulations. So finish this lab. And then we're going to the next one. Which is entity and sentiment analysis in natural language API.
Okay. So, this is an overview of the of this quick lab. I think this might be the last quick lab that we're going to do today. So, the Cloud Natural Language API lets you extract entities from texts, perform sentiment and some text analysis, and classify text into categories. What we will use is the NLP API to analyze entities, sentiment, and syntax. Not just like the previous one, with the previous one, Yamanesa and Rujutkona. This is a name. This is a proper name. This is an event. This is a place. Just now, on va essayer de voir, on va how to the sentiments on va détecter the text, the sentiment, of a phrase. So what you will learn is creating an NLP API request, calling the API with curl, extract entities, running sentiment analysis on text, with NLP API, performing linguistic analysis on text with an NLP API, NL API, and create NL API requests in different languages. First, for the setup, like usual, start the lab, and we wait for the production.
So uh, I guess I guess we'll be we'll be finalizing because uh, we're having issues with sharing my my cloud my my screen. So uh, so uh, I hope you have fun and you have learned lots of new things about Click Cloud and about the technologies that Google is offering using Google Cloud to help using machine learning models and help make it easy for everyone and accessible for everyone to use. So thank you very much everyone for your time and your attendance. Uh, have a and nice and a day. Thank you.